Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Phil with IP Touch and today I will be going over how to create or how to give a fill a spot a fill. Um and also try to showing you how to create like this graffiti looking thing going on. Um it's very simple. Um so let's go ahead and get through this. Alright, so First, what we're going to do is we have we have our font or or text and whatnot, and we can see that it has a double outline. Um, and then we go to fill it, and it just fills the outline. Um, and what happens is that happens. So this is sitting on top, and this is the color behind it. And uh, you can, as you can see, there is a what we want filled is actually not there and what we're going to do is put it there and make it easier to work with so uh, first what we're going to do is delete that square and then we're going to create outlines control shift O right and then what that does is that makes everything a compound path and it puts it into a group so what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup it and now it's all individual without having to be in the group and what we're going to do now is double click. Double click takes us into isolation mode onto this eye. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the outside. At this point, you can grab the inside or the outside. I usually grab the outside, and I'll show you why later on. Um, and you want to copy it. Control C, double click to get out of isolation mode, and Control B is in Bob to paste it behind. And now you can fill it with whatever you want. Let's go ahead and put a gradient there if it was selected there it goes alright so now that has a fill now let's go ahead and do this P which is it adds, it's the same thing but it adds an extra step we're going to double click grab the outside and the outside right here which is actually I guess you can call it the inside but the outside works too so now you hold down shift and you select both of those and we're going to go copy like we did the last time. Paste behind like we did the last time. And we're going to take that out. Okay, so right now I just shut off the eye for that. And we're going to select these two. Make sure that make sure that your what you want to be the whole is on top of this bigger fill. And what we're going to do is go over here to our comp our, our pathfinder and go minus front and that takes out the front and puts a hole in there now we can go ahead and turn that back on and what we're going to do now is grab the outline no grab the fill use the eyedropper and gradient that so now that that's done we're gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of these so let's see if we can do this fairly fast let's see double click grab back double tap behind double click grab copy double click back and select behind and usually what I do is I'll check them I'll move it and then I'll just press control Z move it back to ensure the fact that it's what it needs to be doing double click grab copy double click unselect paste behind move it control Z you're ready to move on double click grab it copy double click out paste behind move it you're good to go alright now that that's done <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and start trying to stylize these things uh, we won't worry about adding the gradient to those just yet, because I'm going to show you a quick, fast, and easy way of doing this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this outline here, which is the green. We're going to actually, what we're going to do is gradient that as well. Since that is actually technically the fill, you can actually gradient it, which is intriguing and cool and odd all at the same time. Um, and we're going to give it an actual outline of a lighter gray. It was that and that. This inside gradient, the fill, if you will, we're going to go over here to our gradients panel. And um what color? Let's go with a let's go with the blue. And we'll go with the blue right now. That blue and then we'll light blue that. Ooh, I like the way that looks. And we'll go radio. Wait, select it again. We'll go radio. Um, actually, I want it flipped around. So you come over here to this little thing right here, and it goes reverse gradient. And voila. If you was ever wondering how you do that, I just showed you. You're welcome. Um, 
now that that's done, let's see what else. Oh, we're going to grab the fill again. And the reason why I told you to grab the outsides and not the insides is so we can do this. Grab that stroke and make it bigger. Also go over here to your stroke panel and push it to the outsides and it gives it like a thicker um, stroke on the outsides. We only needed three for this. And along with that fill as well, what we're going to do is go effect, stylize, drop shadow. Uh, original ones are fine with me. That's all good. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you instead of having to go through and you could, let's see if that, that doesn't do the effect though. That just does the fill. What I'm going to show you is a neat little trick to get it all in one step. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our layers panel. You see this gray dot? That means that there's an effect on it, um, which copies the color, you know, the gradient, the stroke, uh, along with the drop shadow and everything else. And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy it onto all these other layers that we want that to be on. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that, hold down Alt, and drag it down onto the P, drag the P down onto the T, drag the T down onto the U, the U down onto the other T, and then that T onto the S. And what you have is that. And we're going to do the same for this gray outline or the gradient of that onto these. So you're going to go over here you're gonna grab it, hold down Alt, go up, and then Alt, 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 and Alt. And voila, you have it all on the same thing. Now what we're going to do is probably should have did this before. Uh let's go ninety. Uh let's flip that around. Oh wait. I want it at the top though. So we go light at the top, dark at the bottom like that. Let's see if that makes a difference. If that will transfer over. Yes, it will. All right. So, we'll just go back through and redo it all again. Alt click and drag it up. Alt click and drag it up. And there goes that. Now what we're going to do is grab the fill once again, press G. And I tend to randomize where this is placed. So, I'll go up on this one. V to grab your selection tool, G for the gradient down over on this side, V over here, G again for the gradient, let's go to the right side a bit, um, not too much, just just a little variation between it all, um, that way it gives it like a like a random look, not just all in the center of every letter, and it looks boring, you want to keep it interesting, that's kind of the part of, you know, designing, you want people to go, oh, you know what, I like the way that looks, it doesn't look uniform, alright, so now that that's set, what we're going to do is, group everything. You want to group everything. So control G to group it. And you just select every letter and everything on top of that will be all grouped together. So G G G or control G. Control G control G. Now the S is all together and all those parts are all now together into its own separate group. Now you can go ahead and start arranging this thing to look the way you want it to look. Um, and we'll just move that over here. Drop that on top of that. Let's get a smaller U. You can hold shift and drag it down from the top. Overlap. Drag that on top of that. Let's get a bigger T going in the house. Look at this. Uh, right there. We'll get this S over here. Right on top of this T. We'll rotate it just slightly. Drop it down even. Uh, too low. Oh. There you go. There you go. Let's get a bigger I. To match the T. Uh, let's go ahead and edit the artboard right now. We're in CS5, so you go Control O. Oh, psh, 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 Shift O, my bad. And we'll just drop that down. Artboard, artboard there. Um, you can definitely do whatever you want to this thing. Um, there's actually no limitations in designing, but for tutorial's sake, going through it pretty quickly. Um, you can always rewind it. Um, I believe that is it for now. I guess you know we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, comment, uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, definitely subscribe, that way you know what's going on, and every time there's a tutorial comes out, you'll know about it. Also check out the Inconsistent Pictures fan page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash inconsistentpictures, uh, like the page, 
because usually I will post up behind the scene pictures of all my videos, not just tutorials, but my visual effects videos and stuff like that. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them on the wall. I usually answer everything that's that gets posted. Um, also on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. You can ask me questions there. I'll answer them. Um, I think that's about it. So go ahead, subscribe. Give me some of them thumbs up if this was helpful. If you liked it, if you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any suggestions for me to make my tutorials better for you, go ahead and let me know. Um, I'm o I'm always open to to constructive criticism and ideas. Uh, this is rather fast. Later on, maybe I'll go into a more deep tutorial and in depth and and really get down and dirty and show you some off the wall tricks with this stuff. Um, and if that's something you want to see, then let me know. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Phil. Take care.